Hello, everybody. I see three of you so far. Um, if you can see me and hear me, go ahead and uh, drop a little note in the chat box if you know how to do that. Just welcoming everyone here. All right. So I'll give people a couple minutes um, to open the link and find their way in. And if any of you who are out there, we can hear you, great. Um, this is gonna be an interactive reading and activity. So if you wanna just familiarize yourself with the chat box, if you can see that and you wanna drop a note in there, um, I will be able to look over and read those notes. Yay, Cecile, wonderful. Oh, it's fun actually, if you, if you do drop your name in the box, I can see, um, I can see that some of you are here. Um, I can see who you are and who's, who's here with me. Okay. Great. Okay, so we'll just get started in about one more minute. Okay, so I'm delighted to be here with you this afternoon. I'm really excited to share this book with you. Oh, yay. Jan Irby Polly's here, wonderful. Um, so we're here today to celebrate the publication of this book, Drawing on Walls, A Story of Keith Haring, uh, which I wrote, Matthew Burgess is my name, and the pictures are by Josh Cochran, um, who's an incredible artist who I got to collaborate with on this book. Um, so I wanna start today by just briefly welcoming you, saying thank you to Stamola, uh, my wonderful agency for hosting this event and helping me to celebrate the publication of this book. This book started about eight years ago um, when I went to see a uh, exhibition of Keith Haring's drawings and paintings and photographs at the Brooklyn Museum, which is just about a 15 minute walk out my door. And so that was in 2012, in March of 2012. And I had always loved Keith Haring's work ever since I was a little kid. Um, when I saw his drawing, I immediately connected with it. And I loved him for years and I loved his work. And then in 2012, when I saw the exhibition of his work, I was really blown away. I knew that I was gonna love it, but I didn't anticipate how much I would feel and how overwhelmed I would be by Keith's energy and the energy of his work that you could feel on the walls. And so I remember walking through the, uh, the halls and I spent a couple hours in there and I was just so excited. I just, my heart was racing and I was looking at all the details and I felt like probably some of you know, when you see really art that speaks to you, and that you love, you feel a kind of desire to create yourself. I don't know, do you know what I'm talking about? Where you see your, you go to a museum or you go to a show or you're in the presence of someone's art and you get that feeling that makes you feel like you wanna make too. Um, so that's that was the response that I felt with Keith Haring's work. And then when I kind of dazed walked into the bookstore, the gift shop at the end, I saw um, many piles of books and I found this book, Keith Haring's Journals. And I'll just say really quickly that at this point in 2012, I had been teaching poetry in New York City public schools to first, second, third, fourth, fifth graders um, for over a decade. So I had worked with kids and I loved working with kids. And so after walking through the exhibition hall, I opened this book. I found the book and I opened it to this page and I read this quote. And this is Keith Haring writing in his journal. 
Children know something that most people have forgotten. Children possess a fascination with their everyday existence that is very special and would be very helpful to adults if they could learn to understand and respect it. Motorcycle. So I read that and I thought, wait a second, this, this person, this is an incredible person who understands kids the way that I feel like I understand kids. He is, he respects how imaginative and incredible and smart and bright and creative they are. This is a kindred spirit. So I brought, I bought the book, I took it home. And that was the beginning of this process of saying, I want to write a book about keep and share it with young people. Okay. So this is the book for those of you that are just joining us, uh, drawing on walls. And on the back uh, of the book, there is this quote, which I'm going to share with you. And it's also from Keith's journals. And it says, whatever else I am, I'm sure I at least have been a good companion to a lot of children and maybe have touched their lives in a way that will be passed on through time. And so I could see, you can tell how important this was to Keith, um, his interactions with children and how much that meant to him. It's really an important part of his life. So to me, this book is a way of continuing that legacy, um, almost fulfilling that stated wish of Keith to, uh, to pass on his legacy further. Okay, so um, let me start by doing a little reading and then we're gonna do an activity together. By the end of our time together, I would like us all to uh, create an instant book, which sounds impossible, but um, trust me. Uh, so first I'll share a little bit of the book and then we'll do an activity together. All right, great, okay. So first of all, this book is a little bit squishy and it also is a little bit shiny if you see the way it catches the light. So I hope that someday you'll get to hold it in your hands. Either you'll um, buy a copy or you'll visit the library uh, once they're open again and uh, check it out. Okay, so when you open the book, these are called the end papers. And just notice this line, because we're gonna return to this, this idea of a kind of continuous playful line. Okay, and then this is the, dedication page and this is the page that has the epigraphs and i'm just going to read this one today um he's there keith's there painting on walls and running around the world and kids flock to watch him do it the intensity the way he approaches a wall with total openness is the way he approaches you keith is in the best sense of the word childlike open so that's someone describing keith working with kids. And then you'll see when you turn the page, you'll see that Josh created this line of kids who are kind of flocking to watch him make. Okay, here we go. Here's Keith Herring painting a mural with hundreds of children in Tama City, Japan. Keith draws the outlines and the kids fill them in with their own designs. When Keith was a kid, he and his dad often drew together. They took turns making lines and watched as a balloon became an ice cream cone or a dog transformed into a fire breathing dragon. Sometimes they even drew with their eyes closed. Keith drew all the time everywhere, but not on the walls his mother would call, just as he was getting some big ideas. So again, here you'll see this line, which kind of reminds you of the very first page when we opened it called the end papers. And you're gonna see that again repeated. Keith was the oldest in his family and gradually as he grew, three sisters arrived. First Kay, then Karen, and finally, when Keith was 12, Kristen was born. They lived in Cutstown, a small town in Pennsylvania. Keith loved being a big brother. In the summer, he organized games and carnival contests in the backyard, and he would invite the entire neighborhood. He also formed clubs with secret passwords and made little houses where friends would play. No grown-ups allowed. When Kristen was old enough to hold a crayon, Keith invented a game like the one his dad had taught him. Each would draw on a sheet of paper, and when someone shouted, stop, 
they'd swap sheets and continue drawing. Keith also painted Kristen's hands and pressed them on paper to make prints. Look, a mobile. Keith's best friend, Kermit, loved making things too. At school, they were known as the artists. Eager to have a studio all their own, they cleared some space in Kermit's aunt's garage. Keith loved drawing anything with a twisting, turning line that traveled through and around, up and down, in and out again. So here you see again that he's drawing and you can see the way that Josh has made this line that's going all the way around, twisting, turning. Again, keep that in mind because today when we do our activity, we're gonna kind of imitate this idea of a line drawing, a line drawing that's uninterrupted and that just travels across the page. When Keith was 16, he began to feel restless and cuts down. That summer, he caught a bus to Ocean City, New Jersey, where he lived a block from the beach with kids from Pittsburgh and New York City. Keith washed dishes to pay his way, and in his free time, he drew. Sometimes he would stay up all night and watch the sunrise. After high school, Keith moved to Pittsburgh to study commercial art, but it wasn't a good fit. He wanted to be spontaneous and free, following his line to see where he would lead. So I'm gonna stop there um, so that we can play a little bit, so that we can make something together. Um, but you see, again, that line is a theme through the book. It's even on the outside, you can see that Keith loved to work with the line. That, that that was one of the kind of the artist he was is he liked to be spontaneous and free. So he liked to make art and approach a wall or approach a page and to not stop and think too much, to just give himself over to the process of making, which kids tend to be really good, about, good at. Um, at some point when we're growing up, we start to get worried that when we're drawing something, it has to look like something else. And if you're a kid and that's already happening to you and you're like, oh no, it has to be good, forget it. It's one thing we just wanna to try to have fun and play on the page without worrying about the product. And so one of the messages of Keith's example is to really enjoy when we create and to play when we create um, and to not worry about it trying to turn out a certain way. So in that spirit, let's make something together. Okay, um, so this is what you need for this activity. Not very much. You need, um, let's say two sheets per person of blank paper. If you don't have blank paper, use lined paper. Um, so it's not about perfection. And, and also what you learn through this activity that we do together, you can repeat it and try it again. And so if anything goes wrong, don't worry about it. Okay, so two sheets of um, plain paper. If you have like a drawing plain paper that uh, is a little bit heavier, that's nice, but not necessary. So I'm gonna let people sort of make sure that you have the supplies. So this is what I'm gonna use. It's a little bit heavier than printer paper and a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so then the other thing is some markers or crayons or colored pencils. So I'm gonna use these. Whatever you have at home is great. Even if you only have a ballpoint pen and a pencil, it'll work. But it's nice to play with color a little bit. So two sheets of paper per person, some markers, and then scissors. Uh, if you are not yet using scissors, uh, you just need a grown up around to help you when we do the cutting, okay? Um, and that's about it. And then your imagination and your willingness to play. Okay. So I'm looking over in the chat and can someone tell me that you're ready? Just so I know that everyone, that people are out there. Can you just type in, I'm ready. Or if you need another minute, type in, I need another minute.
Okay, we got, I got one yes. Ready? All right. Jennifer Polly's ready. And also listen, uh-oh, if you um, just wanna watch, you can just look ready. All right, here we go. They're starting to come in. Excited to see you guys. If you just um, wanna watch and relax, you can watch and relax. Okay, so the first step is to take a blank piece of paper and to take one of your markers. I'm gonna use this blue. Um, good, 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 here we go. All right, look at, oh my gosh, look who's here. Okay, this is very fun. Now that I know who some of the human beings are out in the world who are playing along, that's very exciting. So I'm gonna give everyone about two minutes um, to draw a continuous line. Don't start yet. We'll all start together when I say go. But we're just gonna move the pen or pencil or crayon across the paper in a continuous line that doesn't have to look like anything. It can if you want it to, but um, the idea is just to move your pen and see, try to stay in the moment, like Keith would say. Um, he called it hand to mind flow. He said that for him, drawing or painting was like hand to mind flow, mind to hand flow, mind to hand flow. All right, sorry about the uh, New York sounds out the window. Okay, so looking at this again, that kind of idea in about five seconds, we're gonna start right, and we're just gonna, in a meditative, playful way, move the marker around the page. The only thing I would say is try to cover, uh, travel around the page. Try to cover a lot of the blank page. Okay, ready? All right, so um, try to relax and start anywhere and just don't lift the pen or marker until I say stop. Okay, here we go, begin. It's kind of like doodling. When you do this at home later, if you ever want to repeat this, you can play music while you do it. And sometimes the music kind of lures you into, you can catch the rhythm of the music as you draw and let the music kind of get into your mind and move the pen around. Okay. Remember, you can't do this wrong. You're just covering the page with a continuous line. And I just finished, but I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to find the place where it feels right to lift up the pen. Great. Okay. So um, this is what mine looks like. I'm going to set it aside now. So I'm going to ask everyone to just sort of take your drawing and just put it over here for a second. No big deal. Just a doodle. Okay. The next step of this activity is based on something that Keith did when he was 10. Um, he was given an assignment for school uh, that is a little bit along the lines of what do you want to do when you grow up? And I know that for me, I used to get stressed out when people would ask that, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Because I was like, I'm not sure. And it just seemed stressful. When we, The way we're going to do it is you're not committing to anything. So we're just playing. So it can be silly. It can be bonkers. If you're already grown up, if you already think that you're grown up, um, like I'm 46. If you're like 46, think about it in this way. Think about later. Think about um, when I'm really grown up. 
I want to, okay? So let me just show you a picture of Keith when he was uh, 10. Look at that kid. So that's the kid who wrote the thing that I'm about to share with you. The more you learn about Keith, the more you love him. It's just what happens. Uh, he's just like that. Okay, so here's Keith's um, assignment when he was 10, where it's, it was, you can see that the heading is uh, when I grow up and look at his pretty amazing cursive. You can see that's a continuous line in a way, cursive. Um, you can already see how good he is with line. Okay, this is Keith when he's 10. When I grow up, I would like to be an artist in France. The reason is because I like to draw. I would get my money from the pictures I would sell. I hope I will be one. Keith Herring. So 10 year old Keith wrote his assignment and this is Keith in 1986 in Par outside of Paris. Um, no, sorry, 1989, outside of Paris. Uh, this is a magnet that's on my fridge. But this is him in a field of flowers sitting below a blimp that he designed. So his drawing is on that blimp, that Zeppelin in the sky. So kind of cool the way that he completely lived his dream and made it real. So let's have that level of possibility right now as I, we do the next thing. The next thing is to take your other piece of paper and this could be a scratch piece of paper. It can be a post-it note. Um, it can be the back of something. You don't have to use another piece of art paper for this. We're just kind of do a little tiny writing, really, really short. When I grow up, I would like to. Now remember, don't go away. Don't get stressed out. You're not, you're not, you don't have to marry this. Um, we're just gonna play. Okay, so and also listen, if you don't feel like writing right now or you're so young that like writing takes a while, just think about it. Just dream for a second. So I'm gonna give everyone about um, one minute to just either daydream about what that might be or to write it down. Don't stop to think, just write, when I grow up, I would like to, okay? So we're gonna go quiet for a second. Okay, let's start. Give yourself about 30 more seconds. Just to, you can even be in note form. You just jot down some notes. When I grow up, I would like to, or when I grow up, I will. Okay, well, I'm gonna, even if you're not finished, we've planted the seed, you have some idea in your mind and that's enough for now. It's hard for me to tell if you guys are ready or if you're still writing and I hate to interrupt people when they're in the creative flow. But um, since I can't see you, I just set that aside. Plus there's more. Okay, so now your notes with um, your idea about when you grew up, set that aside. Just push that over there and then we're gonna take our drawing again. And this is where everyone needs to pay a little bit of attention. I'm going to lead you through some steps because um, we're about to make a book, which seems impossible, but it works. So take your sheet with your continuous line drawing. All right. And 
what I want you to do is we're going to start folding it. Okay, so here we go. The first way to fold it, when you're in school, you learn about hot dog and hamburger. And hot dog is like this and hamburger. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hot dog is like this and hamburger is like this. If you never had that, don't worry. Okay, so first we're going to take it and we're going to fold it down in half this way. Okay, so let's all try that. Um, the one thing I'll say is you want to take your take a moment with this. So make that make sure the edges meet. The, the, the tidier the folds are, the better, but this is the first time, so don't worry about it so much. Okay, so like this, that's the first fold. All right. Okay, so crease it, so there we go. Now we're gonna open it up, and we're gonna fold it the other way. Okay, this is the hot dog way. And again, take a second, Make sure the edges meet. If, if folding is hard for you, that's where it's good if you can grab like a grown-up. Um, kid fingers are better for drawing and grown-up fingers are better for precise folds. Sometimes. All right, so now we have this grid. You with me? So look, we have one, two, three, four, four equal squares. Okay. If you need time, just go ahead and like have someone write in the chat. You're like, wait a second, hold on. Okay, so far I'm assuming that everyone's there. Okay, now here's the next step. We're gonna fold this side into the middle and this side into the middle. Let me show you before you start. So one side I'm folding into the middle and I'm finding that center line. So that's what I mean about this. So you take this and fold into the middle and now I'm going to take this side and fold it into the middle. So give that a shot you guys. Take your time. We're folding both of the edges into that middle line. And then look we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal squares. Okay, so that's what we're working towards. Any questions? If you have any questions about that, um, drop a note in the chat. Um, and listen, if you're already like, this folding business is too much for me, or I don't have a grown up around to help me and it's getting confusing, don't worry. This is your first time. We'll fix it later. Okay. Also, messy is good. Keith would. Um, turn mistakes into magical things. For example, this, this is a quick commercial, and then we're back to the activity. This drawing of the three-eyed guy, the smiling three-eyed guy, this was not supposed to be three eyes, um, but Keith uh, started it and it ended up being three eyes because it was originally gonna be two eyes. And then the three-eyed guy became one of his signatures. Another example, there's so many of when a mistake ends up um, nudging you in a direction you wouldn't expect. Okay, here we go. I'm assuming that we're we're pretty good here. Um, now this word gets a little bit complicated. We're gonna fold it back into half this way. So we're folding it back into the hot dog. This is where we gotta pay attention a little bit. Now, um, take a, a pen or a marker and we're gonna put a dot here right there in the center of these four, and then turn it over and put another dot there in the center of these four. Stay with me. You can do it. See? See that? Okay. If you need me to slow down, let me know. And then just put a little dotted line but connecting those two dots. I'm gonna show you. Okay, now this dotted line, the important thing about this dotted line, this is telling you where to cut. And if we cut it in the wrong place, it's not ideal. So if we're gonna make the book actually come together, we gotta cut it along these lines. So this is our guideline, okay? Again, if you have any questions, pop it in the chat. So I'm gonna fold this in half and then I'm gonna take my scissors. And if you're little and you need help, this is a call out to someone to help you. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to cut just up to the dot. We're cutting right on the center, just up to the dot, just there. Don't cut here or here, just on the dotted line. Okay? We're getting close, you're gonna be amazed. All right. I do this with my college students and I usually have to walk around the room helping people. So if you feel, if you feel a little confused, don't feel bad. Um, doesn't have to be perfect this time around. Okay, so this is what we got guys. We have our drawing, we have this gap in between. Now check this out, stay with me. We're gonna fold it in half and fold it like this, look it. Let me try that again. Fold it down like this, pinch these edges. You wanna create like this kind of star idea. Okay, and then once I do that, I sandwich this and I bring the other element of the star back over. Is that, is that hard? I'm gonna do it again, but let me just show you. Look what I have now. I have a little book. You see that? Any questions in the chat? Okay, let me start over in case you're like looking at this piece of paper and feeling like, what is he doing? Okay, here we go. You got this gap, okay? Actually, look in between the gap right now. That's a little Keith Haring um, statue on my, it's a little Keith Haring right there peeking out from the gap of the paper. Okay, here we go. Fold it down, create this star, and then fold it all together. And listen, if it's kind of messy edges, it does not matter. This is your first book for some of you. All right, I'm kind of hoping you guys are here. Are you here? Let's see. Steven, are you here? Ash, you got it? Jen Irby, you got it? Hitesh, Tall? Give me some sign. Erica, yeah? All right, I got one yes. Other people might be busy. All right, but a lot of you stayed with me, which I'm excited. They're still, you guys are still here, which is great. We only lost one person in all that folding. Okay. Oh, Maddie, Maddie's here. Okay, almost. Okay, that's important. So Erica said almost. All right, what that means is I'm gonna do this one more time. And listen, if you're done, you just get to chill and feel proud that you have your first book. Uh, we have one more step though. Okay, so we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We fold it in half. And then we kind of, that's another way to do it. There's teeth again. Okay, like this, push it down fold it into a little book. All right. Okay. Stay with me. So I did this line drawing in blue and now I'm going to do the next step in pink because I think blue and pink go together well. If you have um, whatever color, whatever color you think would look nice with the line drawing, grab a different color. Okay, good. Okay, Erica says good. All right. So we're grabbing a different color. Now, we're going to take our future vision, whether it's silly or sincere or amazing or modest, whatever it is, this future vision of when I grow up, we're going to take those words and we're going to write them across the pages of this book. So Look at your little book and figure out what do you want your cover to be? Do, you, do I want my cover to be this? Or do I want my cover to be this? I think I like this better, okay? And then that's the way your book is gonna go, okay? So on the cover, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes in a second. On the cover, you could write when I grow up. You could write when. It's your decision. You're the poet and the artist right now, so you get to decide how to put the words across the pages of your book. 
It could be when, it, how do you want to title it? Do you want to say whatever? It's like, you could tell like my dream or you could do like when I grow up or like um, anything that occurs to you. And then what we're going to do is in a meditative, playful way in a second, we're going to write the words of our future vision across the pages. And you can let the words travel anywhere they want. They can bounce around. It doesn't have to be uh, sort of, it doesn't have to make sense. And it doesn't have to be precise. So we're just going to spread the words of our, when I grow up, I would like to across the pages. And you can even end up on this last page. Okay, let's try it. You ready? Ash, you ready? Rez, you ready? Hitesh? Beyblade? Tall? Okay, here we go. So don't overthink it. You'll see it'll just work out. Good. Okay, ready? This is where I would like to play music for you, but um, we're just gonna, if you have your own music, actually, this would not be a bad idea to just hit play um, with whatever music makes you feel calm and into it. Maddie's ready now, good. Okay, so let's start now. Can't get it wrong, just playing. All right, so we're drawing our future, we're writing our future vision across the pages of the book. We're not worrying about where they go, we're just letting them, the words travel in, around, on top of the line drawings that appear. You can write in different fonts, different sizes. And we're not rushing, but we're also not worried about making it perfect. You're not committing to this future vision. You can revise it whenever you want. You can even revise it now as you're writing. If you get an idea, sometimes as we're writing, you get a little idea of something to add or change, and it's often a good idea. It's a good idea if it's coming from that part of you that's your ally, that's on your side. If it's the critic or the voice that's like, no, 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 then you just say, nah, no thanks.
if you finish, you can open it up and go back through. If you need another minute, take another minute. Another thing you can do is if you finish early or if later, you can take other colors. Like I, I want a little bit of yellow in here. Just so if you can color your book and um, add more details later. But I'm going to give everyone another minute and a half to finish up before we go on to the next thing. We're almost done. Okay. Great guys. Awesome. 30 more seconds. I dropped my lip pen. Okay, so this is where, when we're all together in the same room, we get to show and tell. Um, I love this part. We don't really get to do the show and tell. I'm gonna show you what I did because I think that's the only way, you can't show it in the chat box. So this is, this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna show you mine in a second. And then I'll wrap up. We're almost done. A couple more minutes. Um, but if you're willing to take a picture or two of your instant book and share it, um, you can send it to me, which I would love. I love to see these. My students and my students also really love to share these. It's really fun. So here's where you can send them to me. Okay, this is my Instagram handle. And then there's my email. Um, so you can jot that down, easy to find. Matthew Burgess J on Instagram, Matthew J Burgess at yahoo.com on email. Yes, Yahoo. And uh, send me a picture and then tell me if I have permission to share it because I really want to see these. You can just, uh, it's just for me, or I'd love to share them with some of you guys and you can check it out. Okay, here we go. This is mine. Um, <laughs> When I grow up, I would like to live in a small house by the sea with lemon and avocado trees. And every sunset, I jump in the ocean and swim. That's my little book. What does your book look like? Uh, okay. So to wrap up, this is, this is the book. This is what inspired, and Keith inspired it all. Um, a story of Keith Haring, drawing on walls, comes out tomorrow, officially. Tomorrow's the book birthday. And um, so if you want a copy, uh, there's a link to Community Bookstore, which is one of my local independents, one of my beloved local independents, which is the closest one to my house. It's really hard to choose because I'm so lucky. I have incredible local independent bookstores. But uh, it's a great idea to order them from your local independent bookstore. Hey, Nate. Um, and... Or you can order it from bookshop.org, which is a new alternative to, uh, you know what? All right. So we've been together for 45 minutes. 
And uh, thank you for sticking around. I'm sure you have to move on and do other things. Um, it's been a pleasure. And I can't wait to be in the same room with uh, all of you uh, as soon as possible. All right. Please send pictures of your books. And, uh, and oh, one last thing. You know, now you know this skill. You can make books for people whenever you want. Um, you can make Valentine books. You can make books for people to uh, make cheer them up. You can make these books instead of a card uh, and put it in an envelope and send it to people. So this is a good skill. And remember, if you're like, wait, how do you do it again? You can open it up and sort of follow this pattern. Or you can go online and say, um, how to make instant accordion books. And uh, of course, you guys know how to do that. All right, everybody. Love you guys. Bye.